Thank you. Thank you for attending this intersection session. Um, we are the EFL and the COL intersections, and we are going to present this interesting panel. And our panelists, our panelists are uh, Jane Chin, Fuad Hami, Belinda Brownstein, Olenka Villavicencio, and this is hosted but the panel is moderated by Araceli Salas from the Interes uh, Intersection English for as a Foreign Language and Marta Hawachkiewicz <laughs> from the Cold Intersection. Thank you very much for being here. We are going to start this panel with Fuad Hamid. Go ahead, Fuad. Okay, hello, uh, good morning. Uh, it's good uh, to be at the TISO convention again and after my uh, previous attendance at uh, New Orleans back uh, 10 years ago. Thanks to Professor Shahid Abraul Hassan for his uh, recommendation and to Araceli uh, Salas for her invitation to take part in this session. Uh, since uh, the second half of uh, the 2020 spring semester, most Indonesian uh, universities have carried out teaching activities online. And this online teaching is a matter of fact, uh, still going on uh, now. Uh, the online teaching situation we are facing today uh, is considered emergency remote teaching, which has uh, different features from planned outline teaching. Uh, teaching the speaking skill in this context is, uh, of course, uh, challenging because uh, teachers are unable to see what's going on in the classroom, unable to feel the atmosphere in the room, and uh, difficult to monitor body language, engagement, attention, as well as the language tasks at hand. My uh, presentation will focus on how uh, university lecturers in Indonesia prepare, implement, and uh, assess their online speaking class during the emergency remote teaching period. I will also explore a little bit of some challenges and opportunities encountered by the teachers during the uh, pandemic. Uh, this uh, survey that I did involve uh, 68 lecturers who taught speaking class uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the majority of them have been teaching for more than 15 years as can be seen in the illustration. Uh, these lecturers are from 38 universities representing three different accreditation categories from 15 out of uh, 34 provinces across uh, Indonesia. Uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, forced lecturers to shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online setting within a very short time, very abrupt. Obviously, uh, lecturers need to make some adjustment in their teaching and in the planning of their lesson, most lecturers adapted the face-to-face -face lesson and provided some additional activities and supplementary materials. Interestingly, more than 20% uh, of them created new lessons according to the new situation. And this fact shows that they had uh, enough time for uh, preparing the new lesson amidst uh, the pandemic situation. Lecturers also adjusted their learning ob objectives and most of them decided to lower their expectations and adjust their learning objective to the new situation. In the preparation stage, they tried to pay attention to the mode of delivery, the technology tools as uh, learning pl platforms and the organization of the learning activities. Also uh, the types of interaction and assessment. In the implementation stage, most of the lecturers combine the synchronous and asynchronous modes in their teaching. They uh, utilize Zoom and Google Meet for their synchronous teaching. They also use WhatsApp for the low bandwidth option. And for uh, facilitating asynchronous learning, teachers use virtual classes such as uh, Google Classroom or LMS provided by the university. Besides uh, using virtual classes, they uh, also use some additional technology tools for asynchronous learning 
such as uh, Flipgrid, Padlet, and Puzzle, and many more. Apparently, Flipgrid has gained more uh, popularity among lecturers in Indonesia. Uh, Flipgrid allows students to record and upload uh, their video easily. And at the same time, students can watch, learn, and give comments uh, on the other student's video. And this tool can be very handy in online uh, speaking classes. Uh, interaction and engagement have become the teacher's concern during the emergency remote teaching. Uh, activities such as pair work, uh, small group discussion, and whole class discussion, uh, normally easily done in a normal situation, but now have been uh, challenging in an online setting. So they mostly conducted individual learning and uh, uh, activities. They usually provided materials or introduce the students to the speaking activities model through a Zoom meeting or uh, ask students to watch videos from YouTube. They also ask students to do some pair work or group work, such as discussing certain topics or collaboratively constructing scripts for speaking. So uh, the result of the survey also showed that a whole class discussion was almost never used in this emergency remote teaching setting. Uh, in assessing the students' speaking skills, they uh, commonly use extensive and interactive speaking assessment in which they did a question and answer or oral interview. Some of them also use responsive speaking assessment in which students were asked to do oral presentations. The oral presentation could be done in uh, two modes, synchronous using Zoom, or asynchronous using pre-recorded video presentation or uh, using Flipgrid. Then uh, the teachers assess the student's speaking performance using uh, rubrics. And some of them stated that they provided the rubric to the students at the beginning of uh, the semester. Uh, internet connection has been the most common challenges faced by the lecturers and also by the students. Uh, besides internet connection, many lecturers also mention about technology literacy. Uh, some of them stated that learning new technology tools and delivering their course using the new tools is uh, time consuming and required a lot of effort. On the other hand, other lecturers mentioned uh, difficulties uh, related to uh, the pandemic situation, which uh, had uh, given them opportunities to learn new technology tools and allow them to try a new way of teaching through technology. Boosting uh, students' motivation and engagement also required their uh, creativity in designing interesting lessons. Through the combination of sing and async activities, they tried to maintain students' engagement while at the same time allowing students to become autonomous learners. Feedback also became an important part of the teaching and learning process. When students were given extensive and personal feedback, they tend to become more motivated in their learning. So uh, in short, as regards uh, delivery format, they use uh, synchronous, asynchronous, or mix of the two, depending on the availability of uh, students' internet connection and devices. And uh, regarding the learning platform, they tended to use combination of video conference uh, and then messenger application and learning management system. Uh, as to the organizational structure, a combination of self-study materials, interactive activities with peers and individual practices seem very common. And uh, in line with modes of interaction types, utilization of different modes of communication with support from different technology tools, allowing interaction between learner and content, learner and technology, learner and learner, and learner and teacher. Uh, regarding assessment, they tend to administer performance assessment utilizing a pre-designed rubrics. And I think uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And uh, thank you.
Hello, I believe I am next. My name is Belinda Bronstein and I am from the University of California Merced. This part of the panel, in this part of the panel, I'm going to show you some examples of games you can use uh, to give your students the opportunity to speak and also in some cases help them get to know each other. So here's a quick outline. I will give you a quick context of what kinds, what situations I use games at my university. Some examples of online games for three purposes. The first is games for students to get to know each other. The second is games to provide a little competition. And the third is games in which students work together on a task and they're using English to complete this task. And at the end, there will be some resources. So um, let's get started. The, the context, I use games on my campus in two different contexts. The first is with a course of graduate students and postdoctoral scholars who are already fairly fluent in English. And we use mostly conversation-based games at the start of each class for five minutes or so, just so they can get to know each other and warm up. And it creates a good feeling at the start of class. The second context is a monthly game night for a conversation partner program that pairs international students with local students. And these games are more competitive. The purpose is fun, not necessarily conversation. It's more for the fun. And these are done outside of class and these are completely optional. All of the games that I'm going to show you, I do through Zoom where I share a screen. Um, and sometimes we have a split screen where students see their own game board and then they see what I see. For a few, we also use a phone. Okay, so here's the first of the three categories. For this, I'm going to share just one website which has a lot of conversation-based games. And these aren't really so much games as conversation starters. It is Brightful Games or brightful.me as the website. These are free. They're conversation based. They can be used on a computer or a phone. You can customize them. You can create your own questions and prompts. And depending on the game, you can have up to 10 students or players, 25, even 50 if you have a large group. For brightful.me and for all of the games I'm going to show you, students only need to provide a name, if that. They, none, none of the games require email or login. They do not have to create an account. Most of these are meant to be as one-off type experiences. So an example of Brightful, this is something that can be done with a lower level class. It's called draw and tell. Students get a prompt such as draw your favorite holiday. You set a time limit, they draw, could be on their laptop or on their phone. They draw a picture, then one by one, their names come up with their picture and they explain their drawing to the class. That's it, that's an example. There are 12 games in all, and I've placed stars by the ones that I have used in class um, or with students outside of class that tend to be good for conversation and for them for getting to know each other. The second category of games are games that promote a little bit of, we'll say friendly competition. The first is one I use in class and the second I don't use in class, you'll see why. The first is called Scategories. You may have heard of this, maybe not. With categories, you choose six categories, such as animals, girl's name, country. And then when students play, the six cat categories come up and a letter, such as the letter L. And they have a short amount of time to write an, an animal that starts with the letter L, such as lion or lemur, and so on. Nice thing about categories is that it's free. It is appropriate to use in class. It's vocabulary based. It can be played on a laptop side by side with Zoom where you have half a screen, half a screen. And my favorite part is you can customize it. For example, if you're teaching a low level class vocabulary related to the house, you can create a category kitchen, a category living room and so on. And that's really nice. The second one I do not recommend for in class but it is the favorite. It's pretty much hands down favorite of the students who play. It is called Jackbox games. This is not, it's free for them. It's not free for you. Um, this is something I do as an option outside of class, usually for game night, students keep requesting it. It is a set of games. Most of them are based on trivia or drawing, um, a bit like Pictionary, or fooling people with their answers. Uh, there's a little bit of conversation, 
a whole lot of laughter, and it is not appropriate, I think, for students under 18. In the US, it's rated teen and above. Anyway, when they play, I share a screen, and then I share the game on the screen, and then students use their phone as their uh, controller for playing. It's, uh, the cost is about $15 to $25 for you to purchase a, a pack of five games um, that you can use as much as you want with whoever you want. Um, I'm just letting you know it's an option because the undergraduates at my university love it. Finally, category three. These are games in which students work together to solve, to solve a task. I've got two categories here, two types. The first is an escape room. Now, I use escape rooms from the website, theescapegame.com. TEG stands for the escape game, TEG at home. Now, theescapegame.com has several escape rooms that people have to pay to use, whether online or in person, but they also have a limited selection of free ones that you can do with your students, preferably upper level, maybe intermediate upper level it would be difficult for low level English speakers. And um, this, uh, this is something I would recommend that you try out first, you figure out the answers, and then share your screen and have students work together to solve the puzzles. Usually each escape room has approximately six puzzles they have to solve together to get out. And um, if you host it, then maybe you can provide a little help or hints as they need it. The second is one you may be familiar with, uh, Taboo. It's popular in the US as a real card game. And you might have a card-like conversation and students have to guess, you know, what's the word? Hard to do online, right? No, you can create your own taboo slides with PowerPoint. The way you do it is flip the way it is played. For, and it is very easily personalized and it's good for multiple levels. For example, instead of a card conversation, we have a slide conversation and the words in red. Before showing the slide, I have one student close their eyes and the others all try and get the student to guess the word conversation without using any of the words in red. You can personalize it. When working with international teaching assistants, I go over vocabulary that they might be using on my campus, such as lab. So resources. The top has two, um, two kind of groups of resources of ideas especially the second one, it's Trix TV. They have videos explaining Zoom versions of games that are popular party games in the US. Some you would be able to adapt for class, some you wouldn't, but I got some great ideas from that site. And at the bottom are websites you may be familiar with some, such as Random Word Generator for uh, creating words for Pictionary. That's it, and I hope you go out and play some games with your students before class or perhaps outside of class uh, to encourage this conversation and to help them get to know each other a little better. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. I'm sure this is going to be very helpful for our attendees. We're going to continue this uh, panel with Olenka Villavicencio, please. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me to, give to this intersection panel. My session is titled Goi Beyond Speaking in the Virtual Era. Okay. This is my presentation online. I have a quick contest about the university where I work. Uh, I am going to introduce choice for number one with different speaking activities and also choice for number two with, with online resources for you and let's reflect all together. Okay, the university where I work is Universidad San Ignacio de Loyola and is located in La Molina, Peru. Okay, and the situation is the level is A2, undergraduate student, 20 students per class. Learning management system, we use Canvas, so platform, and also different tools that we are going to use with our student. We have more than 270 international alliances for the students. So we have a student from different part of Peru and different part of the world too. Some speaking activities that I use with my students are those question and answers. A student love that because the first day of classes, I put a picture 
about me and the student asked me some questions. This is to familiarize with them. And also after that, they do the same, the same things. Okay, and also encourage a student to ask and answer questions in pairs and in groups. The other is goal-oriented task when I'm going to give the zinc and the sedient. The role play that they love, okay, they are English one, two, three, or four. And different kind of role situations. Something they love that they love is interviewer, for example, the tech talk interviewer, maybe the YouTube. Uh, YouTuber with the follower, okay, at the restaurants and so on. Debates, okay, that is important because we are having our next election this April. So something related to politics and also about the COVID-19, the consequences and everything is important for them. We have some more speaking activities like uh, we are going to use uh, debates, we're going to use uh, simulation, discussions, and so on. Okay, where is the choice for number one? I always use uh, breakout rooms in classes. This is a good way to organize my students in group. I recommend the students, depends on the quantity that you have. For example, three or four students is maximum because I only have 20 students. So sometimes I make groups in pairs, in two or in three. Okay, and you use different exercises. For example, the first one is use reviewed in Google Slides. This is a good alternative for students. The tech talk videos when they are going to show and feel themselves. We are going to encourage collaboration through Google Jamboard. I also use uh, the Waylet that you bookmark anything, create, collaborate, and share all together, and the cultural kill. So we are going to see all of them okay so let's go the first one is something that i use with the google slide is a reflection of 2020 okay so the first thing the student go to these google slides all right and the students individually try to put these sessions so we are going to have a look over there as you can see here okay in this presentation and what is good for that? Because the student try to put here in a multiple screen. I am going to show you about this part. So this is reflect. They are going to put their names, everybody. Okay. And something that I use with my student is the view. When I put a view, I put a view in grid. So this is for me really easy because I can check that the students are working at the same time and it's very useful for them. Okay. So let's continue with the next one. Okay. Another part that I use is this section that also is uh, something related to the 2020. So the student working groups and they talk about the news of the year. okay? Maybe the advice, the TV series, they enjoyed a lot. So something that is real for them, okay? It's important to bring reality to the classroom. Uh, the other tech tool, as Fu had mentioned, is the flip grid. They love to use that. I encourage also my student to record themselves and try to check uh, after the recording. For example, I have one with the flip grid that I mentioned. Here with the tech talks, we are going to use uh, well, some kind of books, okay, and we are going to present. And what is important that the student try to choose the topic according to something that they like. For example, I put, you are going to choose, okay, or topic one, or topic two, or topic three, okay? A variety of topics. They are going to choose one. I give you also some distractions and the preparation before. For example, I can put the list and the student try to tell me the number that they prefer, the category that they prefer. I put distractions also. This is the speaking test preparation before the test, give a presentation, and they are going to do about this section. I also put the link of the story over there, and I explain all the situation with the code. This is important for the student because they have the preparation before it. And as you can see, I'll give you that they are going to organize the presentation and making notes like this. 
And I put different examples for uh, the idea when they great and welcome, tell stories, say uh, why they are thinking you love that situation and the ending, okay? So this is previously. So the students try to feel more, more comfortable with them. And after that, they are going to also tell you script their script, their script sessions. Also, it's important, okay, to give you some situations and like a smile all the time, try to use the body language, don't read, okay, try to look at the camera. And I put the topics that are in the book. So they are going to familiarize with every situation that they know. Okay. So this is about the flip grid, all right? And I am going to show you about this part. Okay, these are my student responses, all right, and they love doing this session because it's necessary that they are going to feel familiarized before the speaking part. Yeah, this is like preparation, this is free for them. So for example, I am going to introduce about here and they are going to check out together now. Hi, everyone. It's summer school. OK. It's good to see you. OK. So they have the possibility also. They have rubrics to see everything, OK, with comments and so on. Right. So I am going to give you here. OK. And this is the next one, okay? Also, we are going to use uh, Google Jamboard, all right? Google Jamboard. Previously to this presentation, I thought, imagine that you are a tech speaker and write seven top tips to be an unforgettable tech speaker, okay? Also, they are going to use a lot. They love using Google Jamboard and different tools, all right? So I am going to give one by one about the students. They are going to make groups and they are going to do all together. So this is something that I work with my students a lot and they enjoy. They are going to see the mistakes and so on about diversity and so on. All right. This is about the Google Jumper here. Another thing that I use is Waylet. This is an interesting tool because you are going to bookmark anything that you really like. Organize and curate because you can share with your students and collaborate and share. How can I do that? For example, I ask my student what uh, website or what application they use for improving their speaking. And they show with me, they share with me different things. So I share with my student all of them. I am going to put uh, collaborative with them and I have a resources. So the next time that they are going to use they immediately go to my wallet and then can share everything. All right. So this is here. This is about the cultural background. I put out, for example, about Peru. And not encourage a student to ask me some question. What's your favorite dish, your favorite drink, or critical thinking? What is a typical dance? And so on. All right. Some tips that we I use with my students are here. Mind your students' level and interest because it depends if this is based in intermediate and advanced. Also show a student how the activity can look like with examples, all right? Provide a student with word and language band, as I showed you before. This is so important that the student feel relaxed, okay? Ask some CCQs, okay, to, to check if they understand or not. Give some student feedback, positive feedback, but also something for improvement, need for improvement, okay? Because it's not a good idea that all the time to say excellent Congress and so on. And encourage a student to ask and share. Okay, so I have over there the choice board number two, okay, that I use also with the student. This is about for the speaking task, this is about the talk, okay? And what is important that the student try to record themselves here and I am going to finish with this. Okay. Okay. This is another for the karaoke that they are going to use. And the most important is 
as educators, we need to ensure that what we teach is what people actually need for the real life in the real world. Career 2020. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. You are going to find me in all the social network as Olenka Yurisencio or Olivia. Thank you. Thank you, Olenka. Thank you for those tips. And uh, now we have Jane Chin. She is our final panelist. Please, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Olenka. Um, hi, I am Jane Chen from the National Taipei University of Education. And today my topic is game-based online speaking activities for English language learners. Um, so I'm based in Taipei and my students are pre-service English teachers. Uh, when they graduate, they, they become elementary school English teachers. And also we have graduate program um, who are in-service English teachers. Um, so these activities are um, designed for them. Okay, next. This is my outline. I'm gonna talk about um, the need for an authentic task in an EFL setting in, in Taiwan. And um, we've also, um, the popular flip flip grid um, that's mentioned a couple of times on this panel, um, escape room, skyfall, and also Minecraft. And I'm gonna talk about the language for gaming since it's game-based, okay. Well, um, I really recommend the, the New York Times, um, the Le Learning Network. Um, I, this is the first uh, slide I, I like to um, share here because um, of the online, the, um, the issues that, that were uh, presented in the Learning Network was, were our, they are very current and you can see here um, that they have, you know, you have high school students in the States um, having comments on the slides. And um, I've all, you know, so this is something that I use. Um, I don't, I, I didn't use any like textbooks. So I really like the Le learning network um, and they have created questions um, for my students to do to go over and discuss. These are really nice questions based on the readings. And you can see that um, we can, my students can, uh, you know, have a live audience um, after they've read other people's um, feedback, a response to the questions. They, they themselves have more of an idea of what other people think and they can generate their ideas. And, and then, um, so uh, for this, I also, used Flipgrid to incorporate the, the, the topics from the learning network and, and bringing in, in, it in into Flipgrid. And also in, um, I've added, this was last year, you can see that um, it, this was in March 16th, 2020 when, when the pandemic just started. And at the time, um, you, you know, different countries, the prime minister and, you know, presidents from different countries, they, they're having um, conferences and reporting on their uh, current situation for the pandemic. So I've um, assigned them videos um, and readings and have them impersonate the, the presidents uh, around the, the, you know, different countries. And um, they were doing a very good job. And, um, and as you are familiar with Flipgrid, I really like the feedback. Uh, you know, where you could set your rubric, you could customize your rubric, but you have, um, they have uh, two categories built in for you. One is idea, one is performance. Also with closed caption, um, the automatic, automated generated captions, you know, students are able to go back and, you know, um, check on their, their, their language. And I, I'm able to provide their, them some feedback as well. Okay, so that's Flipgrid. Um, this escape room um, idea was from Graham Stanley. Graham Stanley um, working with the British Council in Mexico. And um, I came across his, his um, well, he, he was one of the uh, moderators for uh, TESOL's Call IS Electronic Village Online, the escape room, ELT. And what, what we did uh, after participating in his live um, Zoom escape room, 
um, he shared his slides, uh, slides for the, the, the um, uh, escape room. Uh, right, it, it's right here. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to share my uh, genial presentation so that you have access to this. And uh, what I did was basically I uh, hosted a, a, a um, escape room, the exact, the same uh, story uh, based um, and have my students solve the puzzles and my students uh, did a very good job and they love this activity because it's more interactive. It's um, and they got to um, work on uh, getting out of the room um, as a team. This is them with me. And um, so escape rooms for ELLs, you know, believe it or not, I've used the same um, the same theme with uh, my my son who's in you know who is like in sixth grade at the time and with his students with his uh friends as well so so with this uh, escape from the weird house you it, it could be for advanced learners it also could be for kids as well okay All right um next is spyfall it, i came across this game uh, this was introduced by James York, a uh, professor in Japan, Tokyo, Japan, and um, and what we they 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 had they host regular um, game game nights as well, and he's used Spyfall with his uh, students, and I've used this with my graduate students as well. So uh, you can all uh, log in to its uh, Spyfall app right here. And um, once you got in, you're, you're an FBI detective. And the problem is that um, in your department, an enemy spy, uh, you have an enemy spy and you need to uh, figure out who the spy is. And um, what I like about this, this game is that um, you know, for EFL learners, uh, especially my undergraduate students, uh, what they need is to be able to teach in front of the whole class. And a lot of times they need to ask a lot of questions. Um, and uh, for Skyfall, um, they have provided question suggestions for those who are in, uh, can't come up with their questions on their own. So it's more of a less scaffolding for the students. Um, and we also use Skyfold with Discord. I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Discord. Uh, this is if, um, audio based. Um, uh, gamers use Discord a lot and we use this to, uh, uh, we don't go into Zoom, we use this to communicate and play together. Okay, so what I like about this is the, uh, the, the question suggestions. You don't need to use the question suggestions, but um, yeah, uh, but you can. And that's what my students like about it. Okay, next is, oh, okay. So so for all these different activities, um, you know, I had my students host different sessions uh, in games and these were their feedback I got from them. Um, my uh, what I asked them to do is to uh, go over if the level of effort for participating in the activities or contribution to your learning in terms of oral communication, in terms of the level of thinking required, level of language vocabulary required, and the contribution of activity to your English speaking ability, the, uh, if the activity is stimulating and it interesting enough or and um, and if the use there's useful language feedback provided so these are the these are so for each item it's a five point Likert scale and you can see that um, remember I mentioned Flipgrid COVID-19 it's uh, they, they this is like 34 uh, um, and escape room so these are they all uh, really like these activities. Uh, for Flipgrid COVID-19, it's uh, they favored the most, I think, because of the level of 
thinking required and in, in the effort for participating in um, impersonating the, uh, the, the leaders of different countries. Um, so um, sort of give, you know, this is how I gauge whether or not they really like it and whether it's engaging or not. Um, so aside from those, um, I am also in a Minecraft MOOC community. And um, this is one of the uh, EVO Electronic Village online sessions. It's been, uh, we've been running this session for seven years now. And this, on the picture on the left, uh, on the right, um, this is from the VISTI com community, uh, Virginia Society uh, for Education and Techno in education, uh, Technology and Education. And um, we are a group of educators and, you know, uh, learning or exploring how to use Minecraft for, for um, language education. And I really like the Minecraft virtual world and it's especially um, uh, very handy because of the pandemic. Be people like to, you know, come together. And so uh, in a virtual space to interact with each other. And um, I've analyzed why gaming is good for uh, language learning. It's the language of gaming. Um, you know, you need to know the environment, the items you you have and to interact with the learners and the language for gaming, interacting with online um, players. And also because of the language of gaming and language for gaming, you learn the language through this gaming. And so um, uh, these are the vocabulary and um, this was the, uh, I wrote, I've written an article on this. Um, it's a building challenge and I recorded the, the play between uh, the young learners and analyzed it and, um, and please go to uh, my article if you're interested um, you, and because of the interest of time, I'm running out of time here. Um, um, so that's a wool race for, from 2020 and um, Minecraft is really an online game in a diverse community of practice and it offers tremendous opportunities for L L2 language interaction through play. So, and also uh, for exposure to real world English. And so um, that's one of the options if you're interested. Thank you, that's all. Thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Jane, and thank you, everybody. Here's a round of virtual applause. <laughs> So we can do, I mean, we can do this as well. <laughs> um, thank you. These uh, presentations were uh, quite illuminating. Um, on behalf of the EFL and COLIS, SIS, I would like to thank our wonderful panelists and also thank you all for virtually attending our intersection panel. Uh, I just wanted to let you know there will be a live Q&A session right after uh, this uh, recording ends and um, our panelists will be uh, able to uh, respond to your questions via chat. And uh, the slides for this presentation, the slide deck will be available to download, uh, to access through the panel. And um, uh, we will also share the emails, uh, the contact information to the, for the panelists uh, uh, if you're accessing this video after the live Q&A. A session. Again, uh, thank you all for being here and uh, spending uh, time with us. And uh, thank you, panelists, for sharing your expertise and knowledge. Um, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the uh, conference. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.